All right, so for day two of the class, I've got a few more handouts for you and uh, new concepts to talk about. So let's um, open up the computer window. Everyone's computer should be on. Double click computer at the top left. And then from inside the network location section, you want to double click classroom data drive Z. Z as in zebra. That's our network folder. Go ahead and open that. And then we'll scroll down to our class, which is Campus SEO. Last week I had given this document, which we will look at in more detail. Well, I've got another document in a moment in detail. But what I just put in there was client company profile. So what you want to do is drag a copy of that. Don't double click it. You want to drag a copy to your desktop or your flash drive. And the printer is off at the moment, uh, so you can print it later. But I don't really recommend you print this. We'll take a look at what it is, and then we'll, uh, we'll decide what to do with it. But everyone should get a copy of that file from the network folder. Once you dragged it to your desktop or your flash drive, go ahead and open it. And we'll take a look at it together. Now, as I said, there is no homework in this class. There are no grades and assignments and all of that. You don't get a certificate. It's not part of a certificate program. This class and most of my classes are <coughs> three to five week long courses where you get this, I think, valuable hands-on information, which is better than a grade. So here I'm giving you something called the company profile. This ties into the concepts we started to talk about last time, which was we did some competitor analysis. Uh, we searched some keywords, uh, the classic keywords and the long tail keywords. And we checked out, here's some keywords that I might want to use to help me get found. Here's what I'm seeing with the competition. Well, backing up before all of that, there was the question of a why do you want to get online? Why do you want to get your business online? This document is a variation of what my company would engage in if we got hired to do SEO for a company. Uh, people oftentimes come to us and have the mistaken um, notion that, okay, uh, we're gonna, you're going to charge us X amount of money, you're going to do SEO for us, we're going to then get a lot of traffic. Well, that's obviously the very, very condensed in a nutshell result, but there's a lot to it because as we saw in that activity of the keywords, maybe on the spot last week you couldn't think of any. It's a long involved process. This is part of that process. This is to take a step back and to define what is your company about, um, what do you have to offer, to help you develop these keywords to help you get found. So again, this is not homework. I'm not asking you to fill this in and turn it in, but I could look at it if you'd like. You could fill it in. We could look at it during the break and such. But I'm going to go over it and give some insight into it and such, and um, it's up to you to decide if you'd like to use it or not. But I recommend that you do because, again, this is something that my company would do for a real client. Did everyone get the sign-in sheet? If a company, if a client were to hire my company, then the purpose of that would be that we need to help that company get traffic. Therefore, we need to know as much as possible about that company to be able to optimize the company. The people that work for that company, of course, know all about their company, but they don't know the technology stuff that we would provide. So here, I'm giving you this document with these things to think about. These questions and these sections are things that you would use on, on an about page or the biography of a social network. And it's also a way to start to think about your keywords. So I'm going to make notes, and I'll put these notes at the, in the folder at the end of the day. 
Well, today is 8.08. .08. So the purpose of the company profile document content to fill the about page content for the biography of social networks starting points for keyword research. Last week I gave the example of uh, whatever it was, a bakery or a tech company, and we did some searching on Google and Bing. That was a keyword. Then I got deeper, saying something like, you know, a, a authentic Italian restaurant in Chula Vista, getting deeper, like that. Well, on the spot I could do that because I've been teaching this class a few years now, but for yourself, what are the keywords? I don't know the keywords. Where do I go to look them up? And we can go to various websites and we will see the webmaster tools in a little while. We can see, we can go to websites where we can look up keywords. But the problem with that, of course, is that they may not focus exactly on what you're trying to do, what your business is, what your version of the business is. So this kind of document is to give inspiration to start to develop these words. The first section, company name. What is the name of your company? Why did you choose that name? Does it have a special meaning or story? For example, my web design company will be Vic.co and will be pronounced Vic.co, and it comes from my name. So if I were to give this document to you as an assignment for you to be graded, and if you were to return the assignment and simply say Victor's Bakery, that would be a good solid C grade on that answer. C minus, actually. Mm -hmm. Simply telling me the name of your company doesn't tell me enough. Here I'm asking in detail, well, why is your company called like that? Is there some sort of interesting story? This is not simply that I would like to know, which I think is interesting, but this is for you to put it down on paper for you to then develop an about page, a contact page, all of these pages that we'll talk about later, and when we fill in the social networks, biographies, and maybe start to think about some of these keywords. And notice, if I hadn't told you in the document right here how to pronounce this fictional company name, how would you have pronounced it? How did you pronounce it in your mind? I'm saying here, this company is pronounced Vic.co. So even little things like that, that to you are obvious because it's your company, are important to put down in a document that if you get other people working with you, it defines the company. And these things that are coming together are for our SEO, of course. Everything about the class is all about SEO. It's not just about, here's the trick, put a, put a keyword in your H1. That's one of the tricks, of course, but there's so many angles to this that sometimes this stuff is neglected in most SEO tutorials, basic things. And so the company name, of course, is important, but what did we say about getting an exact match domain last time? Remember how important on a scale of 1 to 10 is it to have a website with amazing pizzasandiego.com? From 1 to 10, how important is that? Based on what we talked about last week. Trick question. Less than 5. It's not as important as it used to be to have that perfect name like it used to, to be. Because we can optimize for just about any name if we follow all the things we'll talk about. Tagline. Think of some sense. Think of one sentence that helps people understand what your company is about. Think of some famous taglines or slogans. Why do they stick? Your tagline could also be a concise statement about your company if its name is not immediately understandable. So, for example, if it's Vic.co, a great company for your great website. Um, just by hearing Vic.co all by itself, you don't know what the company is about. So a tagline has to make up for that. PMD Interactive, for example, my company, just by its name, you don't know really what that company does. 
But then when the tagline, customize web solutions for your business, is added onto it, okay, then it makes sense. What they're trying to do is some sort of web marketing company, web design company, online solutions. And again, this is not homework. You don't have to turn this in. But if you complete as many of these as possible, better for you. Because website, that's a key word that someone could search for. Great website affordable website. What if I crafted this slogan as something like an affordable website to make your company go far? Vic.co. Well, it's got the keyword affordable, it's got the keyword website, company, etc. And this, in one concise statement, one concise sentence, of course, is difficult to do. Um, Remind me, what company's slogan is just do it? Nike. Nike. But after 40 years of that company, we know that. In the first year, the first 10 years, when it wasn't such a big company, just do it made no sense. And even if you take it out of its context now, just do it could apply to any company for the tax preparation company. Uh, you know, John's tax returns, just do it. It applies to all of them, but with years of cachet, then that makes sense. Which one? I'm loving it. It's McDonald's. And again, because they have such a huge footprint, and they defined that slogan and used it over and over and over, it sticks with that company. Again, taking it out of context, if someone came to the planet Earth for the first time and heard, I'm loving it, it doesn't apply to anything. I don't understand what it applies to. And that could also apply to a tax business. Do your taxes. I'm loving it. So this tagline could be necessarily uh, objective, or it could be artistically subjective. Great company for your great website. Because Vic.co doesn't make sense by itself, then we would need to have a tagline that helps the main title make sense. But if I'm Victor's Bakery, well, then maybe I can get more uh, prosaic in the tagline. Victor's Bakery, more yum in your tum. You know, just something that, <laughs> just something that could elicit a reaction, and it's part of your marketing. All of this is related to all of that. So it's not just a keyword. It's everything related. SEO is a big topic, as I said on day one. SEO, I don't believe is difficult. I believe it's complicated. A lot of steps. Make a, let me make a note here regarding tagline, aka slogan. If your company, if your company's name isn't obvious what it means, go for an obvious tagline. Conversely, of course, if your company's name makes sense on its own, go for an artistic tagline. Just do it. I'm loving it. A great website for your great company. But it doesn't explain what it is. Just do it. Yes, and that's what I was just saying. When you've got 40 years... Oh, okay. Then you don't need to... Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, what's the obvious thing? Uh, the example, like um, this one about a great company for your great website. This is um, that Vic.co is a company that's going to make you a great website, that sort of thing. So if I also, I said earlier about um, uh, PMD Interactive, you, don't, you can't tell what it is just by its name, but if I say uh, online solutions for your business, okay, that's okay. more obvious. Okay. All right, so then I've got a section on about us. Think about writing a paragraph about your company. Who founded it? What's it about? When did you get the idea for it? Where was it founded? 
Why are you in this business? How will you make the company a success? These answers will help you fill in your biography on various sites. And as we will be seeing, social media is very important in modern SEO. This is to reach an audience. This is to create content. And every social network asks for a little blurb about what your company is. Often about 140 to 180 characters of a biography. Not a spot to write a whole essay, but a short paragraph about what your company is. And that's because when people are on that social network, people can search. People can search within the network to find content within the network. And people can do a search outside, right? They can do a search on Bing, they can do a search on Google, on Yahoo. That's going to search the whole internet. But people can search inside of Facebook. People can search inside of Twitter. And sometimes these big search engines cannot penetrate into these private social networks. So when someone is in Facebook and they start to search for some keywords in Facebook, if your biography of your company has some of these keywords, that could help you get found. Notice these questions are the classic who, what, when, where, why, how of journalism. So if you're able to craft a paragraph or so answering these questions, that's going toward creating that content with those keywords. Little detour here. I've mentioned about us. I'm going to say here important pages on your website. Quite obvious, of course, but a home page. The first page the search engine sees. The search engine is going to tr travel all over the web trying to find websites. It'll find your home page most likely first. So it's your first chance to make your first impression. We'll talk about titles and descriptions and all of that, of course. About page is important for you to have. Info about the company with mission, vision, statements, etc. We'll talk about mission and vision statements soon. But this is an important page to have again, content that helps you get found. But also, this is to help um, define you against spammers. A spam site is in the business of putting up some content online to trick people into buying something or to giving away their email or to steal a credit card or to infect someone with a virus or some of these really new generation of fascinating um, spam software. Uh, there's this one that came out a couple of years ago that uh, I actually had to deal with for a client. Uh, there was this spam website where uh, someone was someone browses a website and suddenly through the speakers there's an alarm that plays and it says warning you are engaging in illicit activity the FBI is going to be warned and then a little picture gets taken of the person because everyone's got a web camera on their laptop so that's gonna freak everyone out and then it says uh, in order for this to not elevate to the next level you have to pay two hundred and fifty dollars here's the instructions how so I've had to deal with that in the real world for one client that uh, his wife was on websites about free movies that she shouldn't have been on and then her computer got locked and she couldn't use her her computer until she paid that ransom to get her computer back so people are gonna fall for that people are gonna see the FBI warning on it and the, and and that saw so and that sound and their own picture right there um, so a legitimate kind of website is the one we're talking about, where an illegitimate one, there's no about page, there's no contact information, there's no way to get in touch with someone to figure this out. This It's just going to be, here's the fake merchandise, or here's the ransom, pay for it. And so if you have all of this kind of content that makes you more legitimate in the eyes of the search engines, it's much better for you. Speaking of which, contact page. A way for real people to get in touch with you. You should have that. 
and we'll go into detail what should be on it a little later. Spammers don't have that. Spammers operate in some shady way that they can collect money from you, but then you can't get in touch with them. And then a blog. Content updated on a regular basis. The search engines are going to value a website that is up-to-date, that has new content, that has something that when people search for it, it's important to them to find, that is up-to-date, modern and current. Um, so an updated website. This does not mean update your colors. This does not mean update your welcome message on the home page. This does not mean, you know, change little cosmetic things. This means content. What are people searching for? So content is a blog. Articles. Take the blogging class on Fridays. We just had day one this past Friday. There's still space if you'd like to come on Friday and um, learn the nuances of blogging. So a spam website isn't going to have these sorts of things were legitimately set up. Make a note that your website will. And so we're talking about a tagline, an about us, a mission statement. That's one of the items I mentioned. Write something that lets potential customers know what's in it for them. Why would they hire you? For example, Vic.co exists to bring the most beautiful web design to the most discerning clients in Southern California. Our designs will make everyone take notice. So this is the goal. This is the mission of this fake company, Vic.co. And if you boil it down, the pure essence is, this is a company that I want to make money by making websites. I want to make money off of my website by making websites for clients, okay? That's a perfectly fine mission for your online presence, your website, to make money. Perfectly fine. Here, by writing in more detail and perhaps in a little bit more of a prosaic way, this shows to potential customers or clients, that is, that might want to hire you. Well, why? I can get a website from any company. I can pull up a Google search and find hundreds of results, a Bing search and find hundreds of results. But here's something perhaps that stood out to a client, where everyone else is all about uh, modern cutting-edge web design, blah, blah, blah. Here we're saying things like beautiful web design, Southern California, design that takes notice. We're saying things in a little bit more of an artistic way than simply saying, we're going to make you a website. And so this sort of marketing with adjectives and, and to build a voice goes beyond simply the nuts and bolts of a company website. It's, it's more artistic, which, which works to reach an audience. Let me give, give an example here. If, you, if you'd like to check this out, if you go to your web browser, it'll open up automatically to our college's website, which is sdce.edu. And at the very bottom, in the footer, there's a mission statement. San Diego Continuing Education commits uh, to student success and community enrichment by providing accessible, equitable, and innovative quality education and support services. You could say, it could have said, the mission of San Diego Continuing Ed is to provide free classes. Perfectly fine, that's what it is. But notice how it's saying it. Uh, student success. We want you to be successful. We're trying to enrich the community via accessible, equitable, and innovative quality education. So it's not just, we give free classes. It's, we do this, and this, and this. And that reaches out to people perhaps more than simply 
the the uh, the objective answer. If you check out Read More, there is the the long version of it. Oh, actually, they changed it. You, there used to be a long version and a short version. Uh, support services to diverse adult learners in pursuit of lifelong learning, training, career enhance, advancement, and pathway to college. Keywords. Someone is searching for, you know, lifelong learning, adult education, pathway to college, college credit classes. This is a page full of all of those keywords that people could be searching for. And it's not just they're artificially full of keywords. It's full, complete sentences that make sense, that are full of keywords of what people could be searching for. say mission statement craft a paragraph or so <coughs> while thinking of uh, keywords about what your company does there's no real minimum there's no real maximum this is an important thing to do, but we've got many things to do, so you don't have to stress about making a, you know, a magnum opus of an essay that covers everything. No, because we're also going to talk about blogging, we're going to talk about social media, and we're going to talk about headings in your text, and a variety of things. So a paragraph is fine. Notice, get inspiration from the colleges page, or go to any other company out there. If you go to the McDonald's website, if you go to Chipotle, if you go to Whole Foods, whatever, if you go to most websites that are doing well, most companies that have a website which is doing well, you go poke around in the About page. Sometimes it's under the Investors page. It goes on there to say these examples of mission statements, vision, vision statements, keywords, and all of that. Values, Speaking then of values, what are some keywords that your company believes in? For example, orderliness, teamwork, discipline, efficiency, etc. Well, there's a list you can go look over here. Because think about it like this: um, What do um, Powerade, Coca-Cola, and Dasani water all have in common? <laughs> they're all the same parent company. They're all the Coca-Cola company. Now the people that drink Powerade want some sort of beverage that helps them during a workout. The people that drink Coca-Cola might want, you know, a classic tasting drink. People that want water, they want water. But it all comes from the same company, the same parent company. And the goal of each of those subsections of the company is to reach a certain audience with certain values and needs and wants. So one person wants this flavored sugar water and another person wants that flavored sugar water. Well one is Powerade and one is Coca-Cola and one wants one that is water which they can get out of the tap but this one's in a bottle. And so these keywords here again are for us to figure out later when we talk about okay let's we need to talk about Twitter or Facebook what are we gonna tweet how are we gonna tweet we're gonna tweet about efficiency we're gonna teach about tolerance we're gonna teach about creativity we're gonna teach about tweet about you know saving the environment etc we're gonna take a uh, tweet about um, the self-actualized individual whatever the values are that your company follows those are going to guide you on what kind of content you'll create so values are keywords that guide what you'll use social media for. Taco Bell um, gets a lot of social media uh, traffic, and the and Taco Bell runs social media really well, usually on weekday nights. 
when the clubs have let out and people are hungry, Taco Bell there is tweeting to people and talking about their chalupa taco thing, whatever, Dorito monstrosities, and people are loving it and they're retweeting and they're, and they're eating the food. The social media is reaching that audience where at, you know, 11 p.m. on a Friday night, I could go for that, for that taco because they're running their social media like the people that they're targeting. This is used for targeting the audience you're looking for on social media. If I were a um, you know, a tax preparer business, a CPA, I would perhaps define the company in terms of like orderliness and efficiency. But those keywords wouldn't work for a daycare center. I wouldn't quite want my child to go to such perhaps rigid daycare center. I would want their creativity and you know, teamwork. So the keywords define the company and its audience. Further, more personification, personality. Think of your company as a person. How would he or she communicate? How would he or she behave? For example, Vic.co's communication is spontaneous and friendly. Vic.co is happy to talk to new clients and share the latest in web design. That goes back to what's the communication going to be like of a particular company? The communication of um, you know, Fidelity Insurance is different than the communication of Chipotle. Uh, simply in terms, could be as simple as terms like using contractions or not, using proper language, spelling things out, writing in a stoic way or in a fun way. That's the personality because there's a, there, that's the communication that they use to reach that audience. I don't want the personality of my CPA to be bubbly and happy and funny and that sort of thing. I want them to take my money seriously. But that daycare, I don't want that communication to be stuck up and buttoned down and too serious. Are they treating my kids that way in the, in the daycare? So all of these relate. Personality, values, and mission. It's your voice. So mission, values, personality defines the voice of your company. What's the copy like? And the copy is the fancy industry term for text. What's the text of the website? What's the text of the tweets and, and the Facebook posts? What's the copy? What's the copy like on the site, social, etc.? I have a friend who's a, a marketing uh, expert in marketing, and she's worked for all the local um, new, uh, news channels, NBC, ABC, all of that. And she was in charge of that. How do we put together this, this, uh, this news report that sounds right, uh, based on the topic, based on the audience? How, are we, how is the reporter going to speak? How is the text going to be written for the audience that it's targeted to? Because SEO and modern marketing and all of that is about targeting, getting directly to the people that would most care about your message. That's why you see ads on social media. You're on Facebook, for example, and then you see on the side all these ads about things that you might like. If I visit a lot of technology websites and then go on Facebook, it's going to start showing me technology ads on the side because most likely I might be interested in buying something related to technology. It wouldn't be showing me things that I wouldn't be quite interested in. And Facebook has such a huge amount of data, collected so much data on people, that it's very effective in reaching the audience that really cares about something. And lastly here we have fundamentals. Here's where you would list 
what's the address of the business and its website and social media and all of that and maybe social media you want to at some point set up. Regarding fundamentals, real address, spammers don't have a real address for people to communicate. Real phone, real email. Now, if I am running my business out of my garage, I don't want to put my real address there. I don't want any crazy person to see my address on a website. Go stalk me. So, real address is acceptable a P.O. box. Now, P.O. boxes have been around decades, and I remember seeing plenty of late night commercials where it says, and send no money now to P.O. box, whatever. <laughs> That sounds, it sounded a little spammy in the real world. It might sound, it might look a little spammy on a website. Now, my post office, and I think most of them are doing this now, uh, allow you to use the street address of the post office, not just simply P.O. Box. So you might have, you know, 21, uh, 33, you know, P.O. Box. 3188 San Diego, California, 91914. Well, my post office, and I think most of them now, let you do something like, you know, 820 uh, Jones Street, number uh, 31833, San Diego, 91914. So perhaps this one looks much more legitimate to people than this one. They're both the same address. I don't believe, for example, mailboxes, etc., lets you do that, and the postal annex, those are not official representatives of the U.S. Postal Office. So the real post office, I believe, might be the only one where you can do this. Never mind those. And yes, it's like 30 to 60 or 70 dollars a year to have a P.O. box. But uh, that could be a business expense that you write off, and I'm not qualified to give tax advice and such. But I'm saying that that's a business expense that you could think about uh, claiming, or at the least ask your tax pro about that. Let's say invest in a P.O. box if your business is your home. Some people will want to contact your business via an address. Some people will want to do it via a phone. Some people via an email. Some people via a tweet. So that's why we have to have all of this contact information, these fundamental items that I'm asking for here. Same thing with a phone number. Well, I've only got one phone. I don't have a landline anymore. I'm going to use my one phone. Again, if you've got your one phone and you're putting that phone on your, on an, on a website, it could have any crazy person find your your phone. So I'm going to say here, yes. If you're if you're running a business out of your phone, your client's just coming over. Mm -hmm. I I put my phone address on a website, and it would never even occur to me to have a PO box because I just sort of assumed you'd only be getting me Because people visit your your actual location, it's important to, to have your address. Um, and they're going to be contacting you much more directly, so I guess this is a little bit different than the purpose of what I'm saying here. I'm saying if I'm a web design company, and the client doesn't come to my house, but we need to communicate back and forth, maybe by sending a check or whatever communication. Well, and, I mean, I, I give my address to a client who's going to be coming. I'll yes. let on the screen when Regarding the phone number, uh, you could look into Google Voice. Uh, Google Voice can give you a free phone number. <coughs> Get a free phone number tied to one or more real phones. What that means is I can go to googlevoice.com, whatever the address is, and set up an account, and they'll give me a phone number. 
And so I'm going to give that phone number out to people. I'm going to put that phone number on my business card on the website. And when someone calls that phone number, it can ring my cell phone or the cell phone of other people on my team at the same time. And whoever answers it, answers it. I could set it up so that it goes directly to voicemail. So it'll say, thank you for calling uh, victor.com. We'll get back to you shortly. They leave the message. The message gets saved to the account and gets sent to you in a, notific in a notification and often transcribed so you can read it. And then you can deal with it. Call them back, never call them back, whatever. <laughs> but this is a buffer. Instead of giving away your real phone, uh, get a Google Voice and it'll be in the middle. Yes? Are you saying you call the Google Voice number that you can leave a, me a different me separate message on Google Voice? Yeah. So they don't get to your real message? Exactly. Ooh, that's what I want to do. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yes. Um, when, when it, let's say you tie that to your cell phone, does it come up showing that it's a Google that's been sent from Google, or does it just come across as a regular call? You can set which one you want. You can set it so that people will see your real phone number or the Google Voice number. When I, when I, when I, when I, I just put my home phone number up, but I, only, I don't give out to anyone. Mm -hmm. It's just for incoming calls. Mm -hmm. So, but on the other hand, I'm, if I'm traveling there and I'm not there, I'm not raising my calls, maybe there are advantages. But, but I see on my cell phone, the Google no, you'll see the person, the person that's calling oh, you. Okay, so just, just goes really directly. Yeah. Wow. You'll see the person's phone number themselves. What they would see, okay, I thought you meant if you called someone. Yeah, if you called know. someone, you, you could choose to show the Google Voice phone number or your phone number. Okay, I just, okay. I just mean like trying to find you on in the grocery store. Hmm. Um, that I believe it can also set up rules about when it automatically goes to voicemail and when you're by the phone. It's pretty powerful and uh, it's been around a while, probably seven years at least. So um, the thing about that is perhaps you can of course get phone numbers in the area code, a 619 or an 858, whatever, but the one that you really wanted might have been taken. When I set this up you know, a while ago, I was able to get something that was like 619, blah, 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 call me. You know whatever that was I forget what it is uh, but this has been around a while so the perfect combination of numbers that you might want might not be available anymore but it's a free phone free phone number so when somebody calls you do you have a way of knowing whether it's somebody calling your cell phone number or it's <coughs> calling your Google phone yeah that can be set up as well on Google Voice to, to delineate that so you know which is which you can have it go directly to to your phone, or you can have the Google Voice app, and so it'll go to the Google Voice app, and you'll know it's a Google Voice call. And here on email, we'll say uh, yes, uh, Victor at victorsbakery.com no victorsbakery at hotmail.com you see the difference? you don't want something at hotmail.com, at gmail.com at yahoo.com, at cox.net whatever, you don't want one of those you don't want for your business to piggyback on someone else's business. You don't want that free Hotmail or Gmail or whatever as your phone. That is not professional. Because any spammer can create any one of these free email accounts. You want something at your website.com, .net, .biz, whatever. You want something at you.com. That one's not free. That one is what you get when you pay some of these service providers like GoDaddy, Bluehost, etc. I don't know the price at the moment, we can look that up later. But it's for a full package usually with these providers of a website, a domain, and email accounts, it's usually around $70 a year. So again, another business expense perhaps. But then you will have a much more legitimate business and you'll be able to have something like sales at mybusiness.com instead of Victor's dash bakery dash two because the other one was already taken.
and then you have to explain to people, okay, you're going to email me at victors-bakery.com, and they'll say, do you spell dash or not? No, it's just a dash. So, yes to your own domain email, no to the, to the free ones. Also, no to either one of those, your email naked on your site. And that means don't simply put your email address like that on your website. Don't put your email address like that so that someone can click on it directly to email you or copy and paste it. That's convenient to people, but it's super convenient to spammers because spammers have these little spam bot softwares that travel all over the internet looking for the pattern of something at something dot something. Every single email in the world is that pattern. So there's these there's this software that a spammer can buy or program themselves that looks for that pattern all over the internet. And if they find that pattern, they save that, it's your email, and then they resell it and you get spammed, you get harassed. So you don't put your email simply out like that. What you do do is contact form. Use a contact form. These little boxes that people have to fill in and the little thing that says click here and type these random letters or click here to prove you're not a robot and all of that, that, that protection, it's called a CAPTCHA, uses a CAPTCHA, those jumbled letters and numbers and that everyone hates, but that helps prevent spam because the spam bots can't crack that very well. And there's a new generation of that that I've seen where it shows you a grid of pictures and it says pick all the ones that are cats. Mm -hmm. So you click all the cats. The, the, <clears throat> the robots don't understand that. So what you want is a contact form on your contact page. You don't want your email simply to be in the corner of your website. You don't want your email to be there on the contact page. In the old days it was fine when you could click on an email address and it would launch your email app and send an email. But that's out of, out of, out of uh, practice now. It's not in vogue anymore, and it's bad. You're gonna get spammed. Your email's gonna get caught up in a spam dragnet, and then you're gonna get not, uh, an inbox that's full of junk mail. Notice all of these ones that make you more legitimate, except Google Voice, are not really free. You have to pay for that PO box. You have to pay for that legitimate email. Google Voice is free, but the other two are not. They're not that expensive in the grand scheme of things, but um, you have to make you have to spend a little money to make a little money. So all of these concepts that, again are are within the orbit of SEO, but they're things that you need to think about to define your company. If I was being hired to work with your company, these are the things that I would be asking you to figure out so that I can optimi optimize your site. If you're going to do this yourself, these are the things you need to look at to understand about your company to optimize your site. Any questions on these notes or anything in the handout so far? Again, you don't need to fill this in and turn it in. You don't even need to print it out because if you are going to fill it in, you probably want to type into it, not on paper. Yes. So the um, contact form does be sent to your email. Yes, you can set it up that it can go to one or more people, okay. depending on your website. But that then goes to victor.victor.com. Okay. It's just that you don't show that address directly to the people. It's a middleman. The contact form is a middleman to to protect your email. So we're going to take our first break a little early. When we come back, I'm going to give you another handout, and then we'll get hands-on. Remember last week I had said, we're going to spend some time setting up the webmaster tools. Uh, we talk about concepts of keywords and such. We talk about this company profile. We start to engage in all of this. How do we know it's working? Well, the 
search engines themselves can give you a bunch of statistics to show you how well it's working. Those are the webmaster tools. We're going to set them up after the break. Um, so that's why I asked last week if you've got your passwords and all of that to bring it so we can use it. At 6.55 we'll take a break until 7.05 and then we'll do that.